If you've seen any of my other videos, you know I'm not typically this sweaty in them. Hello, Windy City travelers and explorers. Tour Guide Andy here with Free Tours by Foot and another week of exciting video tours. If you're new to this channel, you will find many videos on here of travel guide tips and tricks to help you make the most of your time when you visit the Windy City. Uh, and if you're coming back, this week's video should be a great one. This week, we are touring Millennium Park, Grant Park to Buckingham Fountain to Museum Campus. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. There is a lot of rehearsal happening and we're gonna take a look at that in a few minutes, but as you can hear, it's a little loud. So hopefully you hear me more than them. Now, uh, if you've taken our in-person walking tour of the Loop and Millennium Park, you know this is where that tour ends, right here at the Cloud Gate Sculpture by Anish Kapoor, better known as The Bean. And if you take that tour, you'll learn all about this big guy right here. But from the end of that tour, I always get a question from guests every single tour, which is, how do I get to Buckingham Fountain? Or how do I walk to Museum Campus? And both are very walkable. It's easy to get to and this video is going to show you that direct route. So we're gonna start here at the Bean. We're gonna walk through the Great Lawn over the BP Bridge to Maggie Daly Park, and then head south into Grant Park, the historic, uh, beautiful park, straight to Buckingham Fountain. We're gonna cover Buckingham Fountain in all its glory, and then we'll continue walking south through that park until we get to the museum campus, which will be our end point today. So this video should serve as an excellent DIY guide if you're coming to Chicago and you want to see the quieter side of the parks. Uh, after you get your bean in, this will be a great route to take. Okay, I have the camera turned around so you can see the bean there, cloud gate, and from here is where we're going to begin. From here, in order to get to Buckingham Fountain, we are going to go straight through the trees towards the J. Pritzker Pavilion and to the Great Lawn. Now it is currently about 90 degrees. Uh, it's very hot. We're under a heat advisory actually right now in our city. So this is a great reminder that if you are about to take this route, make sure you bring a lot of water with you and make sure everyone in your party is drinking water. Now you can hear a rehearsal going on for the Grant Park Music Festival. You always want to, when you come to Chicago, check the calendar, the Millennium Park events calendar to see what concerts are happening while you're here if you're coming during the warm months. Uh, this is the J. Pritzker Pavilion and the Great Lawn. This is where we host several music and food festivals throughout the warm months in our city. And I'm gonna pull back here and show you some of the design, but you can hear the rehearsals. Something I love about this park is that not only are all of the concerts free, the events are free, but the rehearsals are open to the public too. It just makes it nice and convenient for the rehearsing group and the public who might not be here in the evening to enjoy during the day. Now this pavilion was designed by Frank Gehry uh, when this park was built in 2004 and one of my favorite features you're looking at overhead are all of these speakers. Instead of having pillars with speakers and poles that would block folks view, they instead built this wonderful matrix of pipes overhead and attached all of the speakers on top. That way everyone gets to enjoy with a great sound uh, with an unobstructed view as well. We host, uh, we also host things like you'll do yoga or Zumba on this lawn uh, on the weekends. So again, checking that events calendar is really clutch before you come here because you can get a lot of free stuff to do. So where we're not going is right there. That sidewalk leads to the entrance to this walled hedge maze. This is called Lori Garden. This is meant to be an all seasons or all year round walled garden where you can enter and relax and enjoy some plants. So where we're heading next is going to look from a distance from the bean like a bright silver wall, but it's not, it's actually a bridge. You can see it right there. That's called BP Bridge. It was designed by Frank Gehry as well. Frank Gehry is famous for a couple uh, structures around the world, the Guggenheim Museum being one of them. And also in California, he did the Disney Music Hall. So if you're getting a little bit of inspiration here from that, you are correct. So now we're coming up on the BP Bridge. 
and we are going to cross that right here. So this beautiful metallic bridge is really reflective and nice to look at. It's also one of my earliest memories of visiting Chicago. It wasn't the bean that left me in awe. It was this bridge uh, that takes you right over Columbus Drive, one of two major highways, as we head east towards Lake Michigan. And the reason this left me in awe is that as you cross this bridge, you're walking directly under our skyline, which if you've never been to Chicago before, is breathtaking, <laughs> and not just because of the heat. Uh, I am definitely out of breath today with the high humidity, but uh, it is just a gorgeous view as you walk along. It's relaxing. Even with all the traffic beneath your feet, you can kind of ignore that because you get all this beautiful works of art. Look at that. Now I would advise if you're traveling across here with kids, which you may do because on the other side of this bridge is the Maggie Daly, better known as the Maggie Daly Children's Park. Uh, it's an activities park that's great for families and kids. I would advise that you watch your kids, make sure they don't touch the metal on this bridge, especially on very hot days. I haven't done it myself, but I assume it would burn. <laughs> and you are seeing Maggie Daly Bridge come into view here. I'm going to give you a glimpse over Columbus Drive. And then back at Millennium Park. Just one of my favorite walks to encourage people to take, and I do uh, if you've taken the Loop and Millennium Park tour and you've already done this, uh, then you know hopefully this was exactly why I recommended it to you. And if you didn't do it, now you're seeing why I did. We're just really opening up to kind of that 360 degree view. Woo! Hope that didn't make anybody seasick. Now, back behind me here, so this would be on the north end after you get to the end of this bridge. That's the Maggie Daly Park. That has, in the wintertime, an ice skating ribbon, which is really fun. It's got a rock climbing wall and a couple of other activities over there. It's got some ice cream and park food. So really great place for youngsters who need to work off some steam. Uh, we instead today are actually going to be heading south instead to the Lakefront Trail. Now another great family thing south of this bridge, in fact, we're going to see it right here is the mini golf. This is one of my secrets of Chicago. I actually tell tour groups uh, to keep this private is that this is city mini golf and it's a very affordable, fun putt-putt that's great for families or adults. Honestly, I came here with my husband on a date and the reason it's so fun, you're getting a glimpse of it right there, is that you're actually putt-putting under iconic Chicago landmarks. So that that you just saw was the Chicago Theater Marquee, but you get, uh, you're putt-putting under the Willis Tower and the Bull Stadium, a lot of fun things. So I'm gonna pause just to pan here. This is why this route is one of my favorites. You can walk straight down Michigan Avenue to get to Buckingham Fountain, but then you're encountering a lot of street noise and uh, I prefer this park route instead. It's quieter, it's beautiful, and it's uninterrupted. And we're gonna talk as we get a little bit further south how we were able to keep this entire area unobstructed by buildings throughout Chicago's history. So we are going to get a glimpse here of the back of the Art Institute, our art museum in Chicago, which I do highly recommend everybody check out while they're in our city. 
our museums are not free, but they are always worth the cost, and the art museum is my number one favorite. So I wanted to give you a glimpse of that. Now, if you didn't want to come back this way, you see I've worked us back to Columbus Drive. I'm actually going to round the corner and show that you can actually stay right over there and get to Lakeshore Drive instead. But this way is just a bit quieter. So this is the route I choose to take. They are currently dismantling the concert of Lollapalooza, which was just in town this past weekend. And this area that we're coming up on is called Grant Park. Grant Park is the historic land one of the oldest and largest parks we have. So we're gonna talk all about that, but we are going to stay on this side as they are still very much taking down, I'll give you a glimpse of it here, all of the mechanics of that concert. You can hear them working over there. Okay, so you can see all the trucks, the platforms, everything being taken down. They've got cranes up. Uh, typically, none of that is here. This is gorgeous open parkland. And as we walk, I think I'll stick to Columbus Drive so I don't get caught and stuck anywhere in the construction. But I'll go ahead and talk about the history of Grant Park. It actually dates back officially since uh, 1839 there was an old map in which on that map it was declared that this area was public grounds and should always remain completely public and vacant, free of buildings. And that map was critical as the city grew over the years. This entire area used to be industrial train tracks that date back to the 1850s. And we built all those train tracks from the south to the river, straight north of here, and that was so that the trains could unload uh, into our giant grain elevators and just allowed a lot of trading on the water. The Chicago River, that's, if you just watched our Riverwalk tour last week, you'll know that is kind of what made us such a large city at the time. So those train tracks were all in this area. And uh, at the time, this land did not exist. Right here on Columbus Drive, this used to be the old lakefront. Uh, it was very thin, and once those train tracks were added, uh, they were a site from the 1850s until about the 1890s, and then that is where we started to add land to our lakeshore, and we added land all the way east, so that now Lake Michigan's a bit farther out. And uh, at the time, around uh, 1899, this park was renamed Grant Park, after our president, Ulysses S. Grant. And then what a lot of people don't know is at that same time, there, it was actually Aaron Montgomery Ward of the Montgomery Ward, you know, the mail order company, who was the one to defend this parkland. There were a lot of developers at the time uh, when this was being renamed and redone and land was being added that wanted to add buildings here. And Montgomery Ward was the one who actually looked at that old map and sued anyone that tried to. He put a very hefty lawsuit on a lot of folks who were trying to take over the park, and he won every single time. So we do have uh, Mr. Aaron Montgomery Ward to thank for our beautiful parks today. Now, I think I'm gonna skip ahead just a bit since we have been walking through some construction uh, and get back into the park for you. Still on Columbus Drive, I see now the uh, Lollapalooza tracks are ending. I can get back into the park right here. So keep in mind, while I just took Columbus Drive the whole way south for us, you could just be walking straight through these grass, grassy areas. Uh, I assumed Lollapalooza would be gone by now. It's Wednesday after that concert, but apparently I was wrong. So uh, you could do, your whole walk could look just like this which is what you want, this gorgeous parkland. 
Now, we have only been walking. I, when I cut the camera, I only cut for about 30 seconds to grab some water uh, and cross the street. So this walk, the timestamp that you see on your screen, is about how long it takes you to get from the bean to Buckingham Fountain, which we're coming straight up on through this plaza. I did want to mention that Millennium Park, where the bean is, that park was all brand new, added in 2004, and that was covering those old train tracks. They had existed all the way up through the 1990s when our mayor, Richard M. Daly, was the one who decided to add even more front yard to our home, as we call Millennium Park, and gave us all of that extended park area. Now, once we get up here to Buckingham Fountain, I will tell you the history, but I also just want to show you the views of this work of art. All right, there she is, ladies and gentlemen. This is Buckingham Fountain. Formerly, formally, this is known as Clarence Buckingham Memorial Fountain. And I will tell you the history about it. But first, I just want to get up close and show you the detail as we talk so you can really appreciate the majesty of this fountain. Today, this is steps away from Congress Hotel. You can see over there. That is where our Haunted History and Ghost Tour meets. All right, take this in. So one of the world's largest fountains, this uh, is on typically through May around Memorial Day into October. I, I think it's off by November. When it starts to get cold, we do turn off all of our fountains in the city. Uh, this holds a total of about 1.5 million gallons of water, ladies and gentlemen. And about 15,000 gallons of that water is being sprayed right now through the fountain's 134 jets. Now this large spout that you see up top here, this is uh, only happens about every 20, 20, for about 20 minutes on the hour, every hour. And it's shooting about 150 feet high. So if you drove into Chicago, you often drive either up north on Lakeshore Drive against the waterfront, that's Lake Michigan right there, or you take Columbus Drive, which we had just previously walked on. Those are the two major highways. And either way, you will see from a distance water spouting straight up into the air. Sometimes it's the first thing that catches your eye after our skyline. So if you ever wondered what that was, it is coming right here from the gorgeous Buckingham Fountain. So the namesake, uh, Clarence Buckingham, was part of the Buckingham family here in Chicago. They were very much known for their art collection. Uh, and it was Kate, uh, Clarence's sister, Kate, who commissioned this fountain to be done in her brother's memory when he passed away unexpectedly in his 50s. And uh, the Buckingham family is also known for, and Clarence, his personal collection, was donated to the Art Institute. They frequently had it on display for many, many years, and then they finally did give it to our Art Institute. One of many stories that you hear, it's a windy day, uh, m many of the stories you hear about the donations given to the Art Institute to make it the world-renowned museum that it is today. And the whole thing is made out of uh, carved granite and pink Georgia marble. Now you can come here at night. They put on a very impressive light show every night at 10.35 p.m. sharp. And all of the original mechanics of this fountain are put on display. They've got somewhere over, I believe, 800 light bulbs. And it's, uh, I've read in the past that it's meant to symbolize kind of the color of the night sky and the moon and, and things like that. So if you are in the downtown loop area in the evening, this is definitely a place to stop by. You're seeing in the distance there, Willis Tower, Michigan, Michigan Avenue and the Congress Hotel again. A lot of other famous buildings along our skyline. The Aon Center stands out and that blue one, that blue skinny one, that would be Vista Towers, one of my newer favorites. Now from Buckingham Fountain, we're going to continue walking south to get to Museum Campus. 
Uh, hopefully you can hear me in the wind. It's very strong right now. But I mentioned at the top of this video, I had two goals to show you how to walk to Buckingham Fountain and then how to continue and walk to museum campus. This is all very walkable. I'm also going to remind you here that you want to stay hydrated and fed, especially if you're coming in the heat. So there are several places around Buckingham Fountain to grab food and water, but your best bet is to actually grab those things up north when you're on Michigan Avenue or somewhere in the loop where it's a bit busier and grab something uh, to stay hydrated and fed. I'm gonna turn the camera around and we'll continue our walk. Now I see construction has resumed down here. Maybe this wasn't the best day to plan this walking tour. And in fact, what we'll do is I'll cut over to Lakeshore Drive and give you a glimpse of the waterfront as we walk to museum campus. Now, as you've seen, still a lot of construction, so I haven't been able to walk you through the park system like I was planning. And I'm very tempted to come back and do this again to show you the relaxing park that I promised. But if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I'm not typically this sweaty in them. It really is about 100 degrees right now, and it is not looking to get any cooler over the next few days. So we are here, and we are teaching ourselves a lesson which is that when you visit Chicago or any place, you wanna have a backup plan and you wanna make sure to check all the routes and events because sometimes what you're planning to do gets disrupted. So I just crossed Balbo Drive. We're getting rid of that construction and we're going to safely cross the bike lane and we're gonna walk the lakefront path to museum campus. So I was going to take you through Grant Park. There's a walking path straight to museum campus, but there's another walking path if you head directly east until you can't walk anymore, let me turn the camera around and show you. You can also take the Lakeshore path and get to museum campus. And boy, oh boy, not a bad plan B, everybody. So, in fact, we might even take the lower route, which I think we will. So you see the Centennial Fountain in view over there, that's Navy Pier, which is also walkable from the Bean, but a very different route. We'll do that another day. And then this is the Lake Shore. This is why I always say, if you're coming to Chicago, even if you don't wanna pay to go into any of our museums, you're seeing the Adler Planetarium behind the boat, straight south there. And that is Shedd Aquarium with the blue glass roof there even if you don't want to, and then Field Museum is gonna be straight ahead, even if you don't wanna to go to any of these museums. Walking down to museum campus is always worth it. You don't have to go into any museum to enjoy this area. The view of the lake alone is worth it. And the view of the cityscape, once you get all the way down here, is the reason to do it. Now we're coming to the end of that walk. So this entire walk, I would say if you're doing this trek, you wanna leave about 30 to 40 minutes. Depends on your pace, but I don't think it took me terribly long to get down here. Now, depending on the day, you'll see some food stands open once you're on the campus. But again, as you can see, even though it's a beautiful summer day, this is not open and it is currently about 12.30 is lunchtime so best to get your food while you're still in the city now we have a couple options here we could continue walking around and that is what i would advise if you want to get a wonderful view of our city go straight to the end of the pier all the way to adler planetarium and then turn around and that'll be the best view of the city i'll include i have some footage from that from that time today i'm going to take the path here on the right 
which will actually take us up to Field Museum because you've got a glimpse of the planetarium and the aquarium, but we're right here in front of us. This is Field Museum. This is my number two after the Art Institute that I always recommend for everybody. It's always a great time. It's massive. You can see the largest complete Tyrannosaurus Rex, Sue. Stop by and give Sue a hello. And you could spend a whole day in here, folks, and not see everything. Do you want to be careful as you're crossing? There's a lot of bike lanes, so you always want to be on the lookout. Hold hands of the youngsters, make sure nobody gets taken down. Okay, so <laughs> I promised you that in this video I would take you to the museum campus, which I have done. The last thing I just want to show you is if you had come through the park rather than the lakeshore path we took, I just want to show you up here where you would be coming from. So right here is the underpass that I mentioned before. If you had, if we had walked through Grant Park, <laughs> you come out right underneath this bridge, which is a lot of fun. And this is your first impression. You get Field Museum on your right, Shed Aquarium on your left, and a sign telling you exactly how to get to any of them. You folks will recognize this spot. This is where I filmed my 24-hour guide to Chicago. If you haven't checked that out please give that a watch i tell you all of the major attractions to hit if you're only in chicago for one day although i certainly give you enough activities for about a three-day weekend thank you all for joining me on another virtual tour walk today we walked from millennium park through grant park and columbus drive and lakeshore drive to get to museum campus no matter how you get here it is very walkable Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up. All of that helps other people find us. Be sure to check out our website, freetouristbyfoot.com. If you're visiting Chicago or any city across the world, we have pay what you like walking tours that fit every budget. And we will happily have you join one right here in Chicago when you're in town. If you want to tip your guide, there is a link to do so below. You can buy me a coffee. Thank you very much for doing that. And I will see you next week.